Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In this video, we are going to see how to use Redis as a message broker with Spring Boot application. Redis is an open source in memory data structure store used as a database, catch, and message broker. That's right. You can use Redis as a database, you can use Redis as a catch, you can also use Redis as a messaging system. It supports data structures such as string, hashes, list, set, sorted sets, etc. Before we move on to our example, make sure that you have downloaded the Redis and installed in your machine. You could download Redis through redis.io slash download URL. Go to the downloads page and then scroll down. Make sure that you download the stable version and install it in your local machine. For this example, I've created a simple Spring Boot project and added the Spring Boot Starter Data Redis and Redis Client Jetis dependencies. You need to add this Redis Client Jetis dependency or else your app might result in an error and won't start. This is because there is a version mismatch between Spring Boot Starter Packs and the Redis itself. Alright, let's move on and take a look at our configuration file. So what I have here is like I have created a uh, configuration Java file uh, which is going to hold all the Beam properties for Redis configurations. So the first thing is I have created a Jetis connection factory. Uh, Spring Data Redis integrates with Lettuce and Jetis, two popular open source Java libraries for Redis. These two provide an improved connection properties than Redis connection factory and it's officially supported. So I created a connection factory. You might be wondering why there is no host details, username, password and port details mentioned here. So you don't have to mention the host and port details here. Redis automatically registers the app in it if they are on the same host. But for production, you need to configure them using the properties. Also, Spring Boot gives you auto configuration properties for your Redis host and port details. Our next bean in the configuration Java file is the Redis template bean. Redis template is a central class for the Redis module due to its rich feature set. The template offers a high level abstraction for Redis interactions. So inside the Redis template, I have set the connection properties and then I have set the value serializer. So in this case, it's going to be a string because I'm going to pass a string as a value. If you have an object, you have to modify this accordingly. There is an alternate Redis template that you can use also, which is called the string Redis template uh, for especially for extensive string operations. But uh, I want to show how exactly it is done if you do it in a production environment. That's why I'm using the Redis template here. So next, what we have is a channel topic. Okay, a channel is nothing but a pipe that's going to carry your message. So usually what people do is like they give a name like they they used to give a you know a defined name here, but it's, it's a good practice that you use a random generated name for your topics. Then we have created a Redis message listener container because the receiver has to listen for the message, and you need to create a listener especially for the receiver, and you have to define it as a bean in the configuration file. So inside the listener, what I've done is like I have added the connection factory. I have set the class that is going to be the message listener and I also map the topic to that particular class. Then what I have is I created a task executor for asynchronous method execution with a fixed thread pool of four. Let us move on and take a look at our Redis sender class. We are going to auto wire the Redis template and the channel topic in the sender class and we are going to use Redis template.convert and send to send a message to the Redis queue. Then let's move on to the Redis receiver. The Redis receiver is going to act as a message listener class. So you have to implement the message listener of Redis uh, you know, library. Automatically, this particular class will behave like a listener listening for any messages on the queue. And it will, the message will be already present in the message object. So what I'm doing here is like I'm getting the message, just converting it to a string and then printing it out. So pretty straightforward. Now let's see it in action. Okay, before we see it in action, let's start our Redis server. All 
all right the server is up and running and let's also monitor the server so that we would be able to see how the message is getting sent from the sender to a receiver and how the receiver is receiving the message for this what i'm going to do is i'm going to do use a command called redis cli monitor okay so this is now under monitoring let's go back to our browser and let's try to send a message now okay i have opened up the browser and i'm going to test by sending a message through the redis queue okay we have received successfully sent now let us look at the logs first and then let us look at the redis monitoring queue the redis sender is sending the data welcome to simple programming through redis topic which is a random generated value and you could see here the redis receiver is receiving the data welcome to simple programming from the topic which is a random generator value so our application is working fine the sender is sending the request and the you know the receiver is receiving the response now let us go to the redis server and see what what is happening there when we try to send a message right immediately the receiver has subscribed to this particular uh, you know uh, channel topic and the sender has published the welcome to simple programming in the channel topic so the message was successfully sent and received what is the use case for redis you need some advantages to use it right well here are some details about redis you can use redis if you want to just send a message and forgot about the system which is going to receive all the messages that you produced messages are delivered instantly to consumers redis is very fast as it is a in memory data structure you can use redis if you don't care about data loss because if the server goes down you could lose your data but for this redis has a solution you can form a cluster of nodes and you can use redis sentinel to prevent data loss if you lose a node you can use redis if you don't want your system to hold the messages that has been sent this is a major difference between kafka and redis kafka zookeeper as a copy of your messages even after consumed by the consumer you can use redis if the amount of data that is going to be dealt is not huge with this we have come to the end of this video in our next video we are going to see how redis behaves as a database and as a catch thanks for watching and please subscribe for more videos